Evening everybody, um, bit of a weird camera angle, check this out, I've gone all fancy and bought myself a tripod, so um, let me know if this looks a bit weird for you because um, it feels weird for me, um, the angle just looks all wrong and I'm just used to kind of looking down at it, but um, I kind of felt like everybody was looking at my nose and uh, yeah, it just means that um, it might be a little bit easier. So let me know if you think it looks really stupid and you'd rather go back to the uh, the old ways, then um, <coughs> yeah, tell me about it and I'll, uh, I'll go back to that and have to get a refund on this. It's my dishwasher's beeping at me for some reason. So it is Tuesday, the something of April um, 12th. I think, something like that. Anyway, um, so I'll carry on with a couple of donations and we'll start moving into scotch as well. Um, so the first one that I'm going to uh, going to have, I haven't actually taken the cellar tape off. Um, this was um, very, very kindly donated from um, a company called Interbev. And I try and do that away from the microphone as well so it's to get a bit loud. Um, Interbev are um, a company, a drinks company that um, I think they bought In The House. It was a company called In The House Distillers who um, own Old Pogney, Bal Blair and Spadeburn um, single malt distilleries. But um, they also have a couple of blends under their name as well. And um, a lady called Megan from uh, Interbev sent me an email a couple of weeks ago, just out of the blue. I don't actually know how they found out about the... Um, uh, about the challenge, but she sent me an email and said, "Look, we you know really like to help out, really like the challenge, and um, we can send you some samples." So they did offer to send the old Pontley Twelve. I'd already done that, um, but everything else I, I haven't got. So um, they are. I'm hoping a Bell Blair is going to turn up. I have another Bell Blair, but this is the their box standard version at the moment. Um, so that, I'm hoping that's going to turn up along with what was the other one that was missing another blend that they do. But um, they did send through a miniature bottles of um, Spayburn, which is one of the single malts, uh, Hanky Bannister, which is another blend they do, and this one called Cattos. Um, now this was, uh, this is named after a gentleman called James Cato. Um, and I wonder, I wonder, probably not, but there's a guy called Jamie Cato who um, was involved in the band Faithless, who are one of my all-time favorite bands. Um, and he was one of the founders. I think he was also the guy that was involved in One Giant Leap, which was like a world music, dance music project, and is absolutely fantastic. I digress, they might not be related at all, but it's you know a similar surname. Um, so he um, set up a shop in Aberdeen, which is here, um, set up a shop in 1861. Now Aberdeen was a very successful port and um, he actually knew the founders of the P&O ferry line and also White Star. Now I'm sure White Star was the company that owned the Titanic. Um, and he used those contacts to basically get his blended whiskey that he was selling through his shop to supply the, the ships that were going back and forth across um, across the seas, across the Atlantic and, and wherever. So, you know, cruise ships and things like that. So it was a, um, you know, the higher end of the market. Um, but, you know, you're on a boat, you're not going to go anywhere. So if you can supply the cruise ship, you've got captive audience straight away there already. Um, so um, a lot of history behind it. In terms of the makeup of the blend itself, not 100% certain. Now, they do talk about using um, unpeated Highland and Speyside whiskies but it doesn't say how many. Um, and then they use grain from a lowland distillery. So, where's my jiggle gone? Um, I mean, there, there is a, a number of lowland uh, grain distilleries, so it could be, um, I'm gonna take a guess at Gurman. That'll be my guess, but who knows? Um, not me, clearly. So, yes. Um, we need to move into scotch because I've been doing far too many kind of other whiskies. So let's start moving into scotch as best we can. Uh, and probably after this, I've got a couple of more donations coming on the way. Um, I'm fairly certain actually that um, it was after my last set of videos um, on, that I did on Sunday night. Um, I actually got a donation through that got me to um, over 500 quid. So over 10% uh, of the, the way towards the goal, which was phenomenal, really, really good. I had absolutely no idea how much um, 
I would be able to get out of this. Um, as I've said before, the five thousand pounds was literally a kind of all right. Five thousand pounds will go for that, not knowing if there's any chance of getting anywhere near. But to even get five hundred quid to go towards a charity is just absolutely fantastic. Um, and obviously, it's still fairly early days. Um, as it is today, um, following a, a interview with a reporter yesterday, um, the local-ish paper, the York Press. Um, that's not me on the front, by the way, the train spotting paedophile. But um, in the local paper today, and also on their website, was quite chuffed after a little photo shoot yesterday. Um, to there we go. There is me and my daughter Kyrie and Vaughan, who uh, I'm doing the challenge for, and uh, a fairly decent report on it as well. So um, yeah, and I've had another um, journalist, I suppose you'd say. Um, get in touch with me today um, and I had a, some other photos taken this afternoon um, and he's like a freelance journalist I think it's like a news agency but there's a chance that this might get into some national newspapers which would just be phenomenal mind-blowing but if anybody out there's got any ideas of how I can promote this in any in, in terms of like oh why don't you get in contact with these guys or I've sent some emails to places like BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Radio York and things like that but if you've got any ideas, you know, Whiskey Cask, Mike, uh, Mike, Mark Gillespie at Whiskey Cask um, was fantastic to, to give me an interview. Um, but if you've got any ideas of any other ways where I can kind of spread the word just to really kind of like, you know, try and get as much money as I can for the charity, it would be great. Um, so anyway, back on to this. So Cato's, now this is a problem because I'm sat quite high in the chair. I feel like I'm having to kind of lift everything up, whereas I could just kind of like lean back and slouch and just do it on front of the table. I might have to get rid of the tripod, I'm not liking it anyway. So it's um, light colour, kind of white winey type colour, slightly kind of more like a oat chardonnay, um, that type of colour. Um, and I would guess with that lightness, almost a winey on the nose as well actually. It is 40% as well, fairly certain? Yes. Um, I would guess with that light colour that there probably isn't any colouring added, any E150A. Um, if there is, I wouldn't say it's a great deal. It doesn't really smell like it on the nose. It's actually quite a nice nose. It's not not too um, heavy on the grain, particularly on the nose. There's not that kind of edge that I associate with, with grain in blended whiskies. There's a lovely fruitiness to it. There's a nice softness. But there is a kind of like white wine vibe to it as well. Maybe it's just me kind of looking at the colour and going, oh, it looks like white wine, and my subconscious is telling me right now you're smelling white wine, but there is a really nice soft fruitiness to it. This is very nice on the nose. Very, very, very smooth indeed. Very smooth. Almost, almost to a detriment. It's that smooth, you could almost argue that there's not a lot on the palate. It's got a really nice mouthfeel. It's quite rich, but it's not its not a heavy richness. It's just a nice thickness um, in your mouth. There is fruit there. There's honey. There's a very slight touch of oakiness at the end, but not a great deal. This is an extremely easy drinking whiskey. Dangerously so. This would do absolutely fantastic on a cruise ship because if you were stuck on a cruise ship and you had nowhere else to go and you wanted to drink whiskey and just enjoy it and not fight it and maybe have one or two drams while you're having to put up with all the other numpties on the cruise ship that you can't get away from. I can see why this, this went very popular on cruise ships. This is very, very easy drinking. I fear it might be too light for some people. I fear it might be, it's not wishy-washy. There is some nice flavor there. There's some nice honeyness. Honeyness, is that a word even? Honey notes, shall we go with? There's, there's honey, but it's quite delicate. There are, there's fruit in there, and it's sort of a, it's almost like a grapiness. It's not raisins, it's not heavily sherry. You can probably tell with the color for whatever little there's left in there. Um, it's delicate, there's a nice little floral edge, kind of like a honeysuckle jasmine type vibe to it. Um, but I think some people would, would drink that and go, there's nothing to it. There's nothing to it at all. There is, it's just very, very delicate. Um, and not a great deal of um, 
sort of zing or, or sharpness from the grain whiskey, which it could almost do with a little bit more, could just do with tweaking up just a notch. Um, but all in all, very, very easy drinking indeed. Hmm. I think you're looking at about 18 quid a bottle for this, sort of 15 to 20 quid, which for a blended whiskey that's that easy to drink, can't knock that, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, very, very light. It's a light, easy drinking blend, almost a summer whiskey, that sort of thing. Um, it, it's that light that, like I say, it might put some people off, but I, I think that's very pleasant. It's not mind-blowingly amazing, um, but there's enough there that it's not thin and watery. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's a good whiskey, actually. Decent, decent whiskey. Um, James Catto, well done, mate. You did well there. Uh, and thank you again to Interbev for the kind donation. Thank you very, very much. And um, I, I haven't come across that in shops that much, so I don't know how prevalent it is in the UK in terms of how easy it is to find. Um, but if you can find it, you're looking for an easy drinking whiskey um, that you don't want to spend too much money on. You can't really go wrong with that, to be perfectly honest. Um, right, we'll do a quick rinse out and then we'll crack on with another one and I'll see you next. Cheers.